Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the Stream Tech channel. For today's video, uh, I'm gonna show you one of the most demanding uh, field welds I ever did uh, so far in my welding career. As you can see, we got a 6G facing down. Uh, it's a six inch SCAD 40 uh, cap. That's a gas line, so it's 100% X-ray. Uh, there's a lot of challenges uh, involved uh, to perform this uh, type of welding. Uh, I, I put uh, three tacks, uh, three, six, and a nine o'clock. Uh, probably I'm gonna start from the top, going uh, downhill to that tack, and down from the six o'clock up to that uh, three o'clock. As I said, there's a lot of challenges uh, involved uh, in this type of uh, welding, as uh, this is one of the extreme welds. Uh, I did so far in my welding career as you can see there's not much room uh, those two pipes are uh, really close together uh, you can fit your uh, hard hat or helmet so there's no no room there's a cable tray above your head so I can go this way as well so there's a lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, challenges as I said uh, we have to do downhill we have to use both hands we're gonna do back feed, uh, lay wire, dipping technique, uh, everything possible. The, the most important thing is uh, you have to do really calculate how you're gonna start welding. Uh, that's why I didn't put any tack on the top. So the plan is uh, start, have a good start so I don't have to use any grinder as I don't want that. So if something happened on the top, you'll have grape or something, it's uh, cut out. Uh, there's no room to fit uh, any grinder. So as I said, we're gonna start uh, Start at 12 o'clock going downhill uh, to that tack. I'm gonna feather out that tack, and then after I'm gonna start from the bottom up. Uh, I was even thinking looking through that gap uh, and start doing like a back feed, uh, but uh, but that's not gonna happen. You gotta use, as I said, you gotta use all your arsenal you got of your skills. Uh, the TIG wire I'm using is the ADS uh, B2. It's a TIG, TIG rod for uh, high temperature applications. As I'm working in a power plant. And as I said, this is a gas line, so everything is 100% X-rayed. So for this part, I will uh, partially do a back feed from the top down. And uh, uh, you have to change, you have to adapt to, to any situation because uh, there's no consistent uh, technique that you can use as you have to do this, as I said, uh, you have to use both hands and you have to switch from one technique to another uh, especially now this part is the most critical you don't want to have any any puddle to sack down or have any grapes I'm just going, I'm using a 1.8 rod 1.8 tungsten same thing with the amperage, there is no consistent amperage you can use for entire joint, you have to switch it, as you can see the root from the top looks perfect, that's how it should, and uh, so we don't, I don't have to use grinder at all, I'm just going to use grinder where I can for uh, stop starts and feather out those tacks, now I'm going down uh, from the bottom up to 10 o'clock as I'm a right hand, so I can, on this side I got uh, I got lots of space. I'm just gonna, as I said, uh, you gotta use all your techniques, all you got. You can do back feed on a certain part of uh, of a route, and then you have to switch to deep, and then you have to switch to lay wire technique. As on uh, one point, on on both sides, you got position that you actually. You have to weld over your hand, so if you right hand, you're gonna cross your left hand and uh, it's just gonna block your uh, vision, you're not gonna see what you're doing. As you don't see uh, what's going on on the top anyway. So for this part here, uh, the reason why I welded this side and left this tack, uh, I wanna maintain the, the, the same gap. I don't wanna start welding on one side and then uh, entire the other side. As it might um, close the gap on me, I don't want to do that, and I have to use a grinder, and that's the thing I want to avo avoid. So now I'm gonna finish. I feathered that uh, tack. I'm just gonna run over it. 
as I'm going downhill and I'm just going to connect to the bottom part, uh, bottom section of uh, the route I did. As you can see, I'm using a dipping technique. I'm just dabbing it in that puddle. When you're going downhill, uh, you want to have a little bit uh, higher amperage. I think I'm uh, around uh, 120 right now. As I said, uh, there's no consistent amperage. You have to change it all the way. Okay, this is the route I did uh, with the downhill and uh, partially uphill. As uh, this is a closure weld, so the MT has to be done after route pass. You can see that red powder. powder. So I say MT root OK. Now we're gonna do a hot pass and fill the flash. I'm gonna start that uh, top section uh, downhill and then from the bottom up to 3 o'clock. So for this section, I'm gonna go down. And for the bottom, I'm gonna go up, uphill. As I said, you you have to use uh, all your arsenal on this uh, on this uh, on this weld. Uh, it's uh, really demanding, really challenging. Uh, it's uh, really extreme. It's perfect fit for my YouTube channel. It's extreme thick, and this is the type of joint that actually I've been looking for. So this is the field weld, guys. Uh, you never know what you're gonna get and uh, what to expect that's why practice 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 as much as you can all positions always whenever even if you're in a shop try to do freehand try to do in position some welds because if you end up uh, one day in a field you're not gonna you're not gonna have any surprises for this type of joint uh, if you got 8 out of 10 skills, uh, you might not gonna finish that joint. Okay, we did a filter flash. This side I was actually walking the cup all the way up to 3 o'clock. Uh, all the way up to 10 o'clock on this side. And uh, from the top part, I also did uh, downhill filter flash. Now I'm gonna start with a cap. It's gonna be a two two pass cap. So for the first pass, I'm gonna go on a pipe side. And is there any reason? Yes, there is. A, there's a reason why I'm going on a, on a pipe side with the first pass. Uh, as the second pass is a crucial, I wanna cover fitting. So for second pass, I wanna be on a, on a cap side. As uh, as I said, it's 100% X-ray. I don't want to have any indication on uh, on that uh, shot. So I just want to make sure there is no gonna be any doubts or anything for whoever is reading those uh, X-ray films. Any shadow that's gonna that second pass on a cap or on a fitting site that's gonna it's gonna cover everything. For cap, uh, I'm going uh, around 140, 140 amps. Just holding that uh, wire in the puddle, holding that uh, tiger on the top part of that puddle, and just stretching it down. Try to maintain uh, to have this, uh, equal steps. Try to be straight edge as you can. Even though it's a uh, it's a difficult and a hard weld to do. You wanna, you wanna have it look nice. Okay, now I start on uh, on my second pass. As I said, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on that fitting side. Try to. Try to be consistent with your uh, with your steps, with your width of your uh, weld bead. At this point, I really start sweating a lot as uh, I'm on my knees all the time uh, during this uh, during this weld. As I said on on earlier on beginning of video, there's no, there's no room, there's no even room to stand. 
stand tall, so you gotta be on your knees all the time. So I'm doing the uh, best I can. Okay, now we're gonna going up to 10 o'clock. That's where I'm gonna stop and uh, connect to the top part. I already did the top part uh, with a downhill capping, and uh, from the from the bottom I'm just uh, connecting up. As I said, this is a this is a final uh, final cap, final pass. I'm really satisfied uh, how it turned out, and so is my QC. Good looking for a difficult and uh, really demanding uh, weld. And as I said, this is the X-ray, so everything was good, everything is okay. I'm happy, and that's all matters. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. I have to share this video with you just to show you the life uh, of the field welder. Take care and see you in the next one.